what happened here? How do you get a frog with eight legs? This frog was born with two extra sets of back legs. So how do you end up with this situation? We can answer this question with biology. So today we're going to talk about mutations uh, and we're on page 48 in your notebook. So what we're going to answer are these questions. Where do new traits come from? How can mutations cause phenotypic changes? How can phenotypic changes be passed on to offspring? What's the relationship between mutations and cancer? And then how do mutations make evolution possible? So mutations, cancer, and evolution all in one quick unit. So here we go. So when you think of mutations, you probably think of these guys. Like I always think of the X-Men uh, because I'm an enormous nerd. But mutants in real life are uh, a little different. So mutations are changes to your genetic information, your DNA, uh, and they can result in phenotypic changes. So there are genotypic alterations that can cause phenotypic changes sometimes. Um, sometimes they don't appear at all, right? You might be a mutant and not even be aware of it. So what really happens during a mutation is that your DNA is altered from some sort of outside influence. In this case, we're looking at a radiation affecting some DNA. Um, it can be a small change like with these nucleotides or a very large change. So what causes a mutation is called a mutagen. So this is some sort of substance or radiation that causes mutations to happen. So examples of mutagens are radiation from the sun, UV radiation. That's why they tell you to put on sunscreen all the time because it increases your odds of getting cancer. Uh, x-rays, doctors limit the amount of x-rays that they'll give you because of this very same concern. Carcinogens like cigarettes and certain foods, as well as infectious agents like uh, viruses and bacteria. Viruses can directly edit your DNA and that can cause mutation as well. So some types of mutations. Before I go into this, I, I'd like to point something out. In order for you to pass a mutation onto your kid, that mutation has to have happened to one of your gametes. If you're a guy, it's some of your sperm cells. If you're a girl, it's one of your egg cells. You don't pass mutations on unless you're born with that mutation or you send that mutation to your kids as a gamete. So what kinds of mutations can happen to DNA in particular to sex cells or to uh, the cells that we would contribute to sex cells. Uh, the major one. So we have chromosomal mutations. So chromosomes are enormous bundles of DNA. And if a part of those gets changed, then huge chunks of DNA get changed along the way. So chromosomal mutations are the largest type of mutation. There are gene mutations, which affect a single gene. Um, and while gene mutations are smaller, they can have a domino effect. Because remember, if I remove one letter from a codon, I can totally change the amino acid that it produces. And I can change all of the amino acids down the line in the code as a result. We'll talk about the main types of gene mutations in today's slideshow. But really quickly, let's talk about how mutations can be helpful. And I'm going to focus in on fruit flies. So fruit flies are a model organism for a ton of reasons in biology. They're easy to reproduce, uh, they have a short lifespan, and they have a very small genetic code. We've actually deciphered the fruit fly genome to a pretty high degree, and uh, we noticed something interesting. Uh, these genes called Hox genes are genes that control the development of an organism's body plan. Uh, let's focus in on those red genes for a moment, where the eyes and the head are as well as the brown, yellow, and uh, teal ones, body segments. So we're gonna talk about those in a second. Genes can be switched on or off. So if a mutation switches off a gene for, let's say, legs, then this fruit fly would be born without legs. Mutations can cause harmful or beneficial changes. Let's jump into the types of gene alterations. I <laughs> get the joke because it's, it's genes and they're being, anyways. Um, so deletion is the first type of gene alteration, and it's when a part of a gene gets deleted, gets removed. Uh, for example, here we're removing those two Gs. We now have a completely different uh, genetic word. If we were to look at some fruit flies, uh, we could check out an example where they deleted the Hox gene for eyes. And so the, fr the fly on the left has no eyes. It was born with no eyes because its gene was deleted. 
Or how about the genes for wings? So a deletion mutation was added to the genome of this fly, and it has no wings. Fruit flies are flies. They usually have wings. No wings here. The next type of mutation are insertion mutations, and that's where genetic information is added to a chromosome or a gene. Here's another example. Uh, we see a lot of this in genetic engineering, uh, in particular with, uh, with this type of genetic engineering. So bioluminescence is something that uh, certain species of jellyfish can do. We can remove the gene from those jellyfish, plug it into the fruit fly genome, and now we have some glow-in-the-dark fruit flies, which is pretty cool. There's a, a gene called Indy that's present in mammals, and it's related to the metabolism of mammals. And what it does at the end of the day really is increase the lifespan of those organisms. Well, if you take that gene and you plug it into the fruit fly genome, guess what you get? You have longer living fruit flies. That's extremely interesting if you think about the implications for that kind of gene treatment. Our next type of mutation are substitution mutations. And substitution mutations are when parts of one gene are replaced into another segment of another gene. They're swapped out. So the A and the G and these two genomes were swapped out. Um, we could do this with fruit flies. So some scientists with the Hox gene experiments here, they took the genes for legs and they replaced them where the genes for antennae should be. And now there are fruit flies here with legs for antennae. That's a substitution mutation. Uh, they took the genes for eyes and plugged them into the genes for legs. And now there is a fruit fly here with eyes for legs. Uh, again, another substitution mutation. Duplication mutations, uh, again, are what they sound like. Mutations are pretty easy to understand. Uh, duplication is where a segment of ge genetic information is uh, doubled up, essentially. So if we look at this, CTG, GAG, we just double up the GAG, then we've altered the genetic sequence and um, potentially doubled up whatever that trait was. So for fruit flies, um, scientists doubled up the Hox gene for the body segment where legs, or pardon me, not legs, where wings are growing. So normally fruit flies have two wings, and this fruit fly has an extra body segment and four wings, which is pretty cool. Um, they also added another body segment between the head and the body of the fruit fly, and it produced a sort of neck for this organism. Normally fruit flies cannot move their head around a ton, and this neck allowed that fruit fly to have a lot of uh, head mob mobility. Uh, let's go to cancer. So cancer is one of the downsides of mutations. Cancer is when cells grow out of control. Remember, so a, a mutation happens to DNA, which codes for amino acids. And those amino acids make proteins. One important protein is a protein that regulates cell growth. It tells a cell, go through mitosis, go through meiosis, don't go through mitosis, don't go through meiosis. And if that protein stops being made or is incorrectly created, then cells can start to grow out of control. And that's what cancer is. This is an unregulated growth of cells. What causes cancer is carcinogens. So outside influences. So this is a type of mutation. This is a type of mutagen, pardon me, a type of mutagen that causes cancer. The big one is radiation and tobacco. Tobacco is something that you can stop yourself from consuming. So uh, if you remove that, then you're removing a huge chunk of this pie chart here. Here are some cancer cells under a microscope. If you ever see any growths like these, I would suggest seeing an oncologist or at least a doctor as soon as possible. When a uh, clump of cells begins to gather together and they're growing out of control, it's called a tumor. So here are some examples of tumors. Tumors can grow all kinds of cells. For every type of cell there is, there is a type of cancer. So inside of tumors, we might find th weird things like uh, teeth or hair or uh, blood vessels. Some tumors are completely self-sufficient. They look almost like an organ of their own. Uh, doctors may or may not decide to remove them depending on the type of tumor. So um, let's talk about whether or not all mutations are harmful. Uh, I did say that 70% of mutations are harmful, but that means that 30% of them are not harmful. Most of that 30% are neutral mutations. You might be a mutant and not even aware of it, but sometimes mutations can be beneficial. And let's think about this. Uh, it's entirely dependent on the situation. So let's think about polar bears. 
polar bears. If you live in a jungle and you're a polar bear, you're probably not going to make it. Let's just assume that having white fur was a mutation that popped up along the way for polar bears. Polar bears and grizzly bears, for instance, have a relatively recent common ancestor. Uh, white fur is not beneficial if you live in a green forest. It's kind of beneficial if you live in an area that's seasonal, maybe it snows for half of the year, and it's extremely beneficial if you live in an area of the world where it is snow white constantly year round. And if that's the case, then you might be able to pass your mutation down to your offspring because mutations are genetic. And if that happens enough, then we see evolution in action. Some other beneficial mutations, bacteria notoriously mutate very quickly. So they go through evolution very, very quickly. Um, something that you might have to worry about if you go to a hospital is uh, antibiotic resistance in bacteria. So bacteria are evolving. For them, that's a benefit. For us, it's not so great. But understanding mutations and evolution is critical if we're going to move forward in society. So here's something I want you to think about. Mutations are the raw material of evolution. Without mutations, there wouldn't be any new alleles or traits or genes. Evolution would come to a halt. Mutations are the thing that makes evolution happen. In addition to natural selection, uh, we would not see population change at all if it weren't for mutations.